Well, I'm back. I really wasn't going to come back here and write again, but so many of you wanted to hear more. More about my parents' ultimate end, or about different kinds of non-human entities. I guess a part of me was afraid that I was going to get into trouble. Still, here I am again. I guess I'm here to let you know exactly what I observed between my point that the sixes latched on to my mother and Mike. First, I want to clear up a few things that popped up in the comments. No, I'm not a six. That doesn't make any sense, because being human is the one thing sixes crave but can't really have. They can't communicate, use computers, or pretty much do any basic human thing. I don't think they even have the capacity to consider communication. I also haven't been a victim of a six. To be honest, I think it freaks them out that I can even see them. So they've stayed far away from me. Lastly, I didn't mean to sound so apathetic in my original entry. To be quite honest, I was horrified, but my internal defenses told me that this was the only way that I had a chance to get away from the beatings. The curiosity in me wanted to document what I was seeing. This won't be like my previous entry. Um, it'll be a little less personal and a lot more documentary style, I guess you could say. I won't be going much into the faux haunting parts of the sixes that they create because it's mostly uninteresting. I want you all to know how sixes affect human beings and not their surroundings. Alright. Month one. The first month was pretty normal, other than the fact that my parents became tired and very reclusive. The beatings slowed down a lot, to the point where it was only around the time where I would get too close or talk too much, which would annoy them both. There were times where they would both wake up screaming and constantly make comments on feeling as if they were being watched. I reassured them through gritted teeth that they weren't being watched as I stared into the eyes of the being that only began to feed on them. Month two, my parents began sleeping unreasonably long, like 17 hours at a time long. Sometimes they'd even wet the bed, and I had to clean it. Absolutely inhuman, but usually normal for a subject of sixes. Attempting to wake them would be incredibly dangerous, but then again, it was kind of like that before. Only now, it was amplified. At one point, I woke my mother up to ask her if I can borrow some bus fare to pay my way to a meeting with a family that was dealing with a supposed demon haunting, which it's actually just poltergeist activity caused by a 17-year-old boy with acne problems. She shot up, turned her head slowly, and began to scream the most deafening, inhuman scream imaginable. After that, she launched herself at me. Thankfully, at this stage, they're, um, they're mostly drained of their energy. She slapped me a few times before crawling slowly back into bed falling asleep as soon as she hit the pillow. Month three, the depressive stage, which is usually when we're most commonly called in to treat a case if we're not already called in by the first month. My parents had cut back the sleeping a few hours and just began sobbing about the absolute worst things almost all the time. They both began to self-harm as well, right in front of me. While well, this was the least harmful month for me, it, it was the worst to watch. There were several points where I wanted to tell them, but I knew they would be angry. Additionally, they both claimed to see red eyes behind their shoulders. Once again, I reassured them that I saw nothing. I felt really bad. M month four, this is where things started to turn. They stopped sleeping almost entirely and talked almost constantly. I had never seen this phase personally, so 
I had no idea what to expect. I was sitting down on the couch when my mother sat down next to me and looked me in the eyes for the first time since I was little, but there was no love in her eyes like there had been at one point. I couldn't quite pin my finger on what it was, but she started to speak. She spoke so fast that it took me a minute to make out what she had said. And it was that, um, I never wanted you. Never once in my life have I ever wanted you. When you were a baby, I thought about smothering you with a pillow and then claiming SIDS. The only thing you've ever been good at was being a freak. This, um, this broke off into a month from hell. One that I'll do my best to forget. My parents lost their filter entirely. They could have been making things up to be intentionally hurtful, but it didn't seem like it. Month five, I had to be completely absent for a lot of this. Um, they both became extremely violent, to the point where I was almost killed. I had been brushing my teeth when Mike burst into the bathroom. By this point, both of them were completely spastic almost all of the time. He grabbed me by the back of my hair and kicked me in the back of the legs until I was down on the floor. He dragged me by my hair over to the toilet. There, he attempted to drown me. I don't know what caused him to stop, but he got distracted before he could finish the job. That's around the time I decided I couldn't safely stick around. I couch surfed a lot of the days until a friend with one of the gifts, Milena, um, let me stay with her indefinitely. I told her what was going on and she agreed that we would wait it out and keep an ear out. Milena can see what I see, but um, she can also read moods and basically the aura of a place. We talked about how to handle the end of it all. She was completely against going around during the final day, but I just had to see what happens to sixes when they finish the job. Month six. We showed up outside the apartment complex around 6 a.m. There were other inhuman entities outside the building. These were called Watchers. Watchers are pretty much explained by their name. They like to watch people do bad things. Not just murder and suicide either. Molestation, abuse, sexual assault, etc. They feed off of that until the deed is over. They look almost like normal people, but they're yellowed like an old photo. And they have these awful grins on their faces. The only parts of them that move are their eyes. I've never seen them on a job, but I've seen them out in public in various places, which worried me to the point where I had to go home. I can help with dead people, and I can even do a little about inhuman entities, but I can't make humans not do fucked up shit. It was around 9am that Milena became overwhelmed by the awful feelings she was getting, so I told her that it was alright to go park down the block while I went inside to check on them. She protested, but only for a second. I think she knew how important this was to me. The watcher's eyes followed me from the car into the building. As I exited the stairwell into the hallway of the floor my parents lived on, I heard an absolutely horrifying shriek and I knew that it was happening. I bolted, fumbling to get my keys out of my bag. I, I ended the lock and swung the door open as fast as I could. The sixes were no longer on my parents' backs. I, I think that was the first thing I noticed. They were crawling around them in circles. Mike was on top of my mother, pinning both of her arms down with his knees. God, it was such a bloody scene. I, I had seen some horrible things, but this, this kind of brutality was 
an entirely different chapter for me. I could tell that she was already gone, and the six that had been using her was only absorbing what was left inside. Mike turned to look at me, a horrible grin on his face, not unlike the ones I had seen surrounding me outside. With the knife he had only just used to kill my mother, he slit his own throat. He stood there, frozen, not really sure what to do. I had imagined what this day would be like, but... I never thought it would be so brutal. I guess a part of me assumed that they'd just hang themselves, I guess, but that would be the least violent and not in their nature. The sixes circled around their bodies a few moments more before I caught their eyes. They both became startled and quickly crawled up the wall, past me, and out the door. I dropped to my knees and sat for what felt like an eternity before a police officer dragged me away. One of the neighbors called the cops, I guess, and I was brought down to the station, but all I could tell them was that my parents had been acting strangely for months. I was cleared to leave, and Malena took me back to her house, where I broke down and cried in front of a human being for the first time in what felt like years. I haven't worked a six job since. I got emancipated on my 17th birthday, dropped out of high school, and moved into a small apartment across town. I quit doing jobs, but only for a short while. I needed the money and nobody was going to hire me for normal work, not with my reputation. People in the gifted community knew that I allowed it to happen. The few people that were close enough to know that my parents were tyrants were understanding and even somewhat grateful. I was a walking documentation of how it all happened. Everyone else was afraid of me. I guess I've grown from the situation. We now know a lot more about sixes and know how to stop them before it's too late. There are a lot less cases now that escalate fully. Still, I have this awful fear in the back of my mind that watching my parents die will break my spirit and eventually put a six on my back one day. I'm even more afraid of being condemned to hell for what I did, where I know my parents are waiting for me.